Hi, I'm Andrew Martin. I'm the group publisher at Asia Online Publishing Group, Cybersecurity ASEAN and Disruptive Tech News. We are here at Tech Week Singapore, uh, and I have with me the president, CEO, and co-founder uh, of a company called Azul, uh, Scott Sellers. Uh, Scott, thanks so much for coming to join us. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's really great to have you. I know you came a long way via several different cities across Asia, so oh, but you're looking yeah. very fresh. <laughs> um, so before we get started, do you want to just tell us a little bit, just high level about the company? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So Azul is, um, is a company that's, that's very focused on, on Java. So programming language, the, the runtime platform, so really all things Java. And our tagline is we're the only company 100% focused on Java. And I think what's been exciting for our business, and we've been at this for, for 20 years, we've been very, very successful, carved out, I think, a, a large and important niche of really being an alternative to some of the other bigger vendors that also have Java products, but you know, being able to deliver higher value, more cost-effective uh, product and solutions. And I think a fascinating theme for us is how Java has continued to flourish and how Java can be used as a tool to solve some of the, the most important business problems that uh, IT and DevOps organizations face today. Mm, yeah, so I mean, it's, it is an interesting niche, and I guess it's probably a niche even for myself that I wouldn't have immediately thought that there was a, you know, a, a, an area for a company to develop in that space. So with that in mind, maybe you could share with us some of the, like, the specific challenges or inefficiencies that you discover or you're aware of in the way that many businesses deploy and manage Java applications Absolutely. currently. Yeah. yeah. So there's three main areas when you think about kind of broader business challenges that we address and, and in essence use Java to help businesses. Um, macro, mac, mega trends or macro themes, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. First of all is open source, right? Enterprises traditionally will prefer open source over proprietary solutions. And so being able to deliver an open source Java platform mm -hmm. as an alternative to closed source Oracle, which is yeah. predominantly the, the kind of used to be the dominant supplier of, of all things Java coming yeah. from the Sun acquisition. But as time has gone on, more and more Java deployment, in fact, the majority of Java deployment is now based on, on open source. And so we could talk more about okay. that and how we play in that. So that's kind of macro trend number one. Number two is all about cloud. And of course, cloud is, is proliferant and, and everyone wants to be in the cloud. But as we could talk about, there are some inefficiencies when uh, enterprises or organizations start to deploy in cloud in terms of cost and some of the, the realities of cost overruns. And Java and a higher performance Java can actually be used as a tool to deliver a more uh, cost effective cloud deployment, so that's kind of the, okay. the, the second thing. And the third thing is application security, right? So everyone's concerned about security broadly, and, and you know there was a very famous uh, Java-based security uh, vulnerability called Log4j that you've probably heard yeah. about. And it's an example of how applications can be exploited. We have products that are uh, specific to Java, but because of where Java sits in the overall application stack, we can do things and, and, and have insights that other languages or other platforms wouldn't otherwise. And so ultimately, using Java to deliver you know, the most secure application platform is, is something we also help our customers with. Excellent, yeah, and, and um, uh, on, on that, I mean, we're at Cybersecurity World um, part of the show this week, so I do want to come back to the security element. But before I do that, when we were looking at your kind of website and some of your materials, uh, we noticed you brand yourself as like the secret weapon of uh, cost optimization. Um, and we were thinking about that and we, we thought that most likely for most companies, they're probably not thinking as Java as one of the areas, what we're guessing, the, uh, one of the areas where will be a starting point for where they're going to do cost optimization. So um, is, it, is that actually true? Is yep. it common for businesses to overlook the potential of making savings in Java? It's, it's a very good question, and, yeah. you're, and you're spot on in that yeah. when people think about their cloud cost optimization strategies, they're not normally going, oh, Java, that's where I should be focusing first, right? Yeah. The, the, the simple reason is, first of all, that be, delivering a more cost-effective cloud deployment strategy is multifaceted. There's a lot of different aspects to it, and Java is a piece and a powerful piece that can, mm. but there's also many other things. And so it's a broad category in general, but when you think about the, the application layer, the Java layer also, the reason that Java has been 
and remains so popular is because it is largely the same across different vendors that provide mm. the, the Java runtime. And all of Java is developed in the open source community. It's a widely popular open source community called OpenJDK. Mm -hmm. So Oracle's products and our products and Red Hat's products and, and there's you know, free open source uh, builds. Mm -hmm. All of these, at the end of the day, adhere to the same Java specifications and, and, and tests that are run in order to be able to say you're Java compliant. So that's why Java has remained so popular is because it's not fragmented. Yeah. So any application will run on anyone's runtime. So that's the good thing. But it also means that since that's people's understanding of how Java works, they don't normally think about, oh, is there a different or a better version of a Java runtime that mm. can help me? And so what Azul provides, we have a product called Azul Platform Prime mm. that is based on OpenJDK, so it's based on the same standards, but we enhance it in a number of ways to make it more performant, more resilient, more scalable. And it, the equation's really quite simple. If your applications are faster, mm -hmm. you need less compute to deploy, which means you, need, you can lower your cost in cloud, yeah. right? And okay, so it's yeah. a simple concept, and really it's, it's quite simple to actually implement. By changing your Java runtime, no change to the application, no change to the deployment, the application simply gets faster. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. you could start turning down the number of compute instances you need in the cloud and start saving money. Got it. So it's not actually just about you might save money on your licenses. It's actually the resources you're using to run the... Right. It's really yeah. not a license play at all. Yeah. It's all yeah. about being able to contain, reduce the amount of, of compute instances that you need to buy Understood. in the cloud. Understood. Yeah. Excellent. So. Um, the next question I have for you, you, you've kind of alluded to anyway, and, and, and our question was maybe born out of our ignorance of the market, because we were talking about the fact that we know who the market leader is when it comes to, to Java, and I think you mentioned them by name, but you've already explained actually that stranglehold on the market has changed a little bit. But, Absolutely. But still want to ask the question that, you know, I, I guess they're still the dominant force, um, but that being the case, when it comes to Java, um, you know, why should people specifically think about Azul? Because I think you've mentioned open source, but not right. necessarily your potential benefits. Absolutely. Yeah. So, or Oracle, of course, is is the one who's most known to be the the, the grandfather. I don't know if the real okay, yeah. son, son's technically the grandfather. I guess yeah, Oracle's yeah. now the father. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, certainly the uh, a significant amount of, of Java's history and, and where Java's headed is a result of Oracle and, and formerly yeah. Sun. So many enterprises today are using the Oracle Java runtime to power their Java-based applications and infrastructure. As I mentioned before, a lot of people don't recognize that Java all comes from the same place. It does come from an open source project called OpenJDK, which is a very strong community of that initiative. So Oracle, ourselves, Red Hat, mm. IBM, many others, Microsoft to some degree, Amazon. So it's a very strong community-led effort that is advancing the future of, of Java. Mm. What enterprises uh, are wrestling with is the never-ending increase in cost coming from Oracle that they're charging for Java support. So specifically mm. over the last four years, Oracle has changed either the license policies or the pricing associated with Oracle Java and it's getting more expensive. It's getting dramatically more expensive. This past January, there was a, a, a real uproar in the Java community because Oral, Oracle made, once again, a price change. This time, instead of what used to be charged by how much you use as an enterprise, which is kind of sensical, they moved to an employee-based pricing model, which makes no sense. So regardless okay. of how much Java you use, you will pay based on how many employees you have in your organization. Okay. So if you've got 5,000 people in your company and you have three Java apps, you're going to pay the same for another 5,000 person company that has hundreds of apps. Yeah. Makes no sense, right? So as you might imagine, a lot of enterprises are kind of throwing up their hands in frustration saying there must be a better way. And the better yeah. way is Azul. So we deliver the exact same Java runtime because again, it all comes from OpenJDK. Yeah. It's very straightforward to transition from Oracle Java to uh, our product, which is called Azul Platform Core. Mm -hmm. uh, Azul is the clear leader worldwide in terms of, of helping customers getting comfortable doing that and being successful. Um, we've transitioned hundreds of customers from Oracle Java to Platform Core. We, we literally have 100% success rate doing it, so mm -hmm. um, our business is, is 
you know, frankly flourished because of some of the uh, very aggressive pricing tactics that Oracle has, has chosen to, to uh, employ. Okay. And, and um, just coming back to the point you made earlier, when customers make that change, um, obviously, you know, you've mentioned about the, uh, the changing of license, but is it possible they can even expect to see differences in performance after they make the change, or would they expect it to be the same? Just so it will be a the, like for like. The, yeah. So we have two different products, one yeah. with three, but in terms yeah. of the Java runtime, there's two. The Zool Platform Core is truly a like for like with yeah. Oracle, so no differentiation yeah. in terms of performance or any of that. It's basically pure open source version of the same thing that Oracle Got has, yeah. right? And so in that regard, we like to say actually we're bug for bug compatible with Oracle, okay. which is a good thing, right? Because yeah. that means no change. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. you're just changing vendors and you're changing licensing model going from what I would say expensive proprietary with mm -hmm. Oracle to open source and much more cost effective with Azul. So platform core, purely like for like in terms of how the applications will perform. So Platform Prime is the differentiated product, and that's, the, again, also based on OpenJDK, yeah. but enhancements. So when customers use Platform Prime, they would expect higher performance, better scalability. Got it, understood, things, right? excellent. So um, I've got one more question for you, and I want to bring you back to that security question, yeah. because you mentioned that's one of your three, uh, I'm not sure if you called it pillars, but yeah. one of the three areas that you mentioned. So could you give us maybe just a few more specifics on you know, why with uh, Azul it's more secure? Right, so uh, there's kind of two main areas where uh, security vulnerabilities exist, right? Mm -hmm. One is, at the Java runtime itself. So the JVM or the JDK as it's called kind of in the, in the tech world. Yeah. That's the layer of software that actually runs Java-based applications. And so at the, at the JVM JDK layer, which comes out of OpenJDK, we were one of the founding members of a group called uh, the, the Vulnerability Group as part of OpenJDK. So other members like, like Oracle and Red Hat and others also participate in that. And even though it's all based on open source technology, when you're dealing with security issues, it has to be actually be a closed forum because mm -hmm. when you release security updates and patches, it needs to be coordinated. Yeah. So if we released our updates before Oracle did or before Red Hat did, that's not good for the Java community because mm -hmm. if we were to release patches, the bad guys now know where the, where the vulnerabilities yeah, 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 exist. Yeah, yeah, right? So yeah. it's a great example of how cooperation in an open source community can really work. And so when when vulnerabilities get fixed, it's done once a quarter where we all coordinate release together. What we are able to provide literally within, within minutes of those vulnerabilities being published as known, our customers get patches for those vulnerabilities. And so at the Java runtime layer, you know, you, uh, our customers know that they always have access to completely the latest and greatest updated um, Java runtime. And, Different vendors and open source projects can be days or weeks later. So okay. in terms of just knowing you have access to the latest and greatest fully secure, that's one thing. So second area of security that we can help our enterprises be more secure is at the application layer. So now we're talking about the Java applications themselves, the Java libraries, the Java frameworks. We have a product called Azul Vulnerability Detection, mm -hmm. which is a SaaS product that monitors Java workloads as the Java workload is running, it communicates to our SaaS service, and what Azul Vulnerability Detection does is in real time, it assesses, is a does a vulnerability exist in that given job application that's running? And what we saw talking to our customers is that there's a major void in an overall secure software supply chain strategy where there are not tools that run in production that can tell you exactly, oh, does this application have any known vulnerabilities? Mm. And the reason that this matters and is different than you know, tools that only exist on, say, on the developer side or in the, the CI, CD flows, these types of things, is mm. that in, those, in that world, there's the problem of false positives, right? Yeah. And, and what that means is basically like when, when typically these security mm. scanning tools are run, you get reams and reams of reports. And yeah, since yeah. most software, or these days, most applications are built using open source software, there's vulnerabilities all over the place. And so, the reams of reports turn into never-ending JIRA tickets and others that are open, and developers throw up their hands They and get say, alert fatigue. Yeah, they yeah, get yeah, fatigue, yeah. right? Yeah. And so they start yeah. ignoring them and waving them because they got to get their applications out, yeah. right? And so, the, what Azul Vulnerability Detection does, by running in production, we can tell those development teams, not just hypothetically, 
do you, you know, have this in your, your build or your jar file? This application ran the vulnerable code yesterday, two days ago, and so mm -hmm. it gives immediate remediation priority to mm -hmm. the development team so they can go in instead of shooting shotguns yeah, or yeah, you know, you're yeah. taking laser points. So that's really what you have to do in the world of security. There's so many vulnerabilities. In, in a given quarter, there's over 200 known vulnerabilities that get published for Java layer, yeah. right? That's a lot of work for applications yeah. teams to keep up with. So what they really need is a tool to, to prioritize of these are the applications that actually are vulnerable and to be able to take immediate action. And that's what Azure Vulnerability does, is allow for that application layer to, to be that much more you know, secure. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a common best practice we hear from a lot of security vendors, but yes. you're applying the same principle to the, the Java, the, the Java right. uh, environment. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. using the fact that, that Java is a, is a runtime layer yeah. to be able to, in essence, put in hooks that don't cost any performance at runtime. So that's a yeah. key element is that if you're going to be looking during production environment, you can't have performance tax, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so doing this in a performance hitless manner is critical in terms of being able to provide production level data. Excellent. So listen, Scott, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it's been very interesting talking to you. I understand a lot more about what you're doing. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time. I hope that the uh, rest of your trip to Asia is fruitful and hopefully we'll get to speak to you again in the future. Thanks very much, Ed.